Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Stevie, and happy Friday. Hello, Aki. Happy Friday to you, my friend. Yes, here we are. It is star date 2180416.6. In beautiful Arcadia. What does that mean? It's a, it is a, a somewhat generic term now for um, bucolic pastoral untouched by industry like nature scape. A beautiful natural paradise. Oh. Like yes. like Riza, if you will. Yes, not unlike Riza. Well, you know, not the spas and clubs and sex houses or whatever, <laughs> but you know, the beautiful Riza nature preserves. Mm. That's Arcadia. Okay, a place of wonder and joy, and that is uh, where we get the name of this penultimate episode of Star Trek Picard: Arcadia. But the the entire title is uh, "Et in Arcadia Ego." I looked it up. Hmm. It's much darker than you think it is. <laughs> oh, we thought we had it down with our Latin schooling, did we not? Yes, our Latin schooling. Well, we had "I am." We had "and in Arcadia." Listen, we had the general definition. Pretty much, yeah. What did we miss? "And in Arcadia, I am." However, the reference apparently is to. Um, the specter of death, even in paradise. So instead of et meaning and, it means even, like even in paradise, I am there. I am death. Hmm. Yeah. That is dark. It is dark. Where is the death? It's implied. It's written on oh. a tombstone <laughs> in a beautiful place. On It's in a painting and apparently it comes from Virgil. It's a poem. And uh, Arcadia is a beautiful place with, I don't know, it's complicated, but essentially death. Where would we be without your nerd sleuthing skills? Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's essentially memento mori, you know? It's like, remember, you're going to die. <laughs> um, but it's a prettier <laughs> way of saying it. <laughs> I see. And so, knowing that now, as I did not know the first time I watched uh, this episode, I now get the ramifications of this, this, uh, ah, this title. Indeed, indeed. Right? It all makes sense now. Mm-hmm. Even in paradise, death is among us. I feel like with Picard, our rundowns are so informative. What can I say? It's an erudite show, and we are erudite human beings. <laughs> Uh, we should probably run this thing down mm, before, yes, uh, before, yeah, before we get too deep. Mm-hmm, that's right. To run it down. Can you run it down for me? Talk about the car down. Run it down, down for me. Jean Luc Picard. Mm-hmm. There it is. Yes. We're discussing episode nine of mm. Star Trek Picard, the penultimate episode, but one episode left. It's titled Et in Arcadia Ego Part One. So we know right at the outset, this is going to be a to be continued episode. So don't expect any closure. In fact, you can expect things to get worse and worse and worse. And then for the episode to end, the situation is just going to get terribler and terribler and terribler. Dire, dire, dire. Dire, dire, dire. And it begins direly, because as you may recall, La Sirena was jumping into a, a transwarp conduit led by uh, Soji, and uh, they're they're flying to the planet of her birth that she found in the middle of a thing while she was about to be killed by Romulan agents, and then Picard, and there's a whole thing. So anyway, they're in this, trans-rom- this transwarp conduit, and 
uh, we begin. I'm Jurati is under a table begging for it to be over. She's not liking the experience. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, Rios is, uh, I think he's kind of digging it. He's like not quite mm. piling it, but he's watching. He's like chewing on a cigar. And uh, they're just banging through this transorb conduit. It's crazy. Uh, and then they they fly out of the conduit and they're there. Boom. In the Gullion system. One observation I had when they were flying and all of the rumbly, bumbly turbulence that they had, they had seatbelts. Well, I mean, listen, this is not a, a Federation ship. This is La Serena. This is, uh, you know, you got to strap in. But where's the fun in like the, you know, like the going from one side to the other, like Kirk did and they all moved to one side and yeah, then they well, all moved to the like other. That was like many years before this. And they were probably like, that's great if you're in Terrible Starfleet. Camera shakes. Uh, <laughs> or they're just shaking the platform you're sitting on. Uh, mm. That's, I mean, listen, you can do that. If you want okay. people to pay for passage on a ship, though, you probably don't want to throw them around <laughs> the that's bridge true. whenever you go too fast. Anyway, thank you for that interjection. Yeah. Continue. Yeah, what if they end up like, um, what's her name? The pilot in Discovery and get thrown over their console. Mm. Oh, no. Detmer. 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 Yeah, no seatbelts. And that's a bajillion years in the future. Anyway, they come out of the conduit. They're in the Gullion system. They're looking at the planet. Rios asks Soji, is this the place you're looking for? She's like, totally. Picard's like, did we beat the Romulans here? Are we good? Rafi's like, yeah, I don't see any Romulan ships. I think we're good. There's no ships whatsoever. She's like, great job, Soji, for doing that. I never want to do it again. Gerardi comes on the bridge, and she's like, whoa, 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 why, why didn't we go to Starbase 12? And Rios is like, ah, oh, we made a change of plans. And, and Picard says that they traveled 25 light years in just 15 minutes, which is why maybe the ride was so bumpy. And Soji says this is the planet, and it's called Coppelius. Oh, I should have looked that up. Man, so many things to look up. Anyway, Coppelius is the name of the home planet they're chilling there being like oh wonder and excitement and then <laughs> red alert yeah red alert narek is here and he's angry and he's in his snakehead ship and he followed you through the conduit and boom they start exchanging fire pew 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 pew, pew back and forth pew 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 <laughs> Pew, 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 pew. But then La Serena is able to disable it. Boo! And the ship is all disabled. And they're like, oh, okay, what? what's going on? And Rafi's like, there's a life sign still on the ship, but it's very faint. And so she's like, good, leave him. And Picard's like, oh no, I'm Picard. So you must remember there's a difference between killing your enemy and then just letting them die. Beam that person aboard. But just then, as they're about to do that, the ship suddenly boom, 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 appears behind them because. Uh, Nara could use his cloaking device, I guess, or something to create like a fake hologram image of them in front. Anyway, now he's shooting at them from behind. Pew, 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 pew. And then Rios is like, oh, shoot. And he's trying to get out of the way of the Romulan weapons. Yeah, uh huh, right. That's unexpected. But then Rios is like, hey, uh, unexpected arrival, baby. And guess who it is? It's the artifact. Uh, we know who's on the artifact, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, uh, it's back and it's bringing its weapons online. And then Rafi says, oh, gosh, there's five uh, bogies coming from the surface. Bogies. And they appear to be giant uh, flowers. Big, big, big orchids. And they are. They're just enormous f f fucking flowers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they surround La Serena and they surround Narek ship. And a bunch of them surround the board cube and it causes all the power to go out and the ships start plummeting into the atmosphere and it's a lot of rocking and a rolling. You thought it was bumbly wumbly before. It's bumbly wumbly when you're falling through the atmosphere surrounded by a giant orchid and you have no power in your ship. And uh, there's like a shock wave because I guess board cubes are not supposed to enter atmospheres. That'd be my guess. Yep. All the lights go out. And then there's a very cool scene, which I think doesn't get enough credit, which I remembered but uh, I couldn't remember when it happens when the lights go out and then uh, Rios is lighting his lighter. And of course he has to, it's an old school like Zippo or something. And so he has to light it, spark it like exactly enough time so that you see everyone's face in the darkness. It's like Ravi, Gerardi, Rios, Soji, Picard, and then it's lit. 
Uh, and they're all like, oh, okay, uh, what's going on here? Uh, the ship shook and they enter the atmosphere and then they're like light is coming through the portholes or whatever, but they're still being surrounded by a flower and they all look around and everyone seems okay. Except Picard, who's completely passed out in his chair. And they're like, JL, how you doing? And he goes, well, thank you for coming everyone in a dazed voice. And then the crew all rushes over like, John Luke, John Luke, John Luke, John Luke. and that's the end of the opening. It's very exciting. I had a funny Zippo joke for you. <laughs> okay, please. What is the difference between a hippo and a Zippo? <sighs> I don't know. What's the difference between a hippo and a Zippo? One is really heavy and the other is a little lighter. But um Wow. 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 I hope you're proud of yourself. Mm-hmm. Hey, I have th- I've had yeah. these for ages, these sound effects. I've never used them. It's because they're terrible. That is a lot of fanfare for your joke. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? You should have a, maybe you should have a crappy joke. I mean, a perfectly good joke every episode. And we should, we just don't know when it's going to come. And then when it does, sad trombone Mm. and uh, rim shot thing. Well, it has to be Star Trek, Star, Star Trek, Star. It has to be Star Trek specific. Star Trek specific. Killer warrior Romulan nuns. Star Trek specific. Star Trek Star specific. Trek spe- Star Trek specific. We're also very good here at Set Phasers at coming up with tongue twisters that are <laughs> Star Trek specific. Um, <laughs> Killer Warrior so, Romula Nun. Killer Warrior Romula Nun. That's very Star Trek specific. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's a good warm up. up, 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 up. So that's mm. back on track. Back to the show. <laughs> Picard uh, is like having weird flashbacks and then he wakes up and he's in the sick bay on La Serena and Jurati is attending to him and she's like, I, oh, the power went out and then we landed and they opened up the windows. Apparently the ship has shutters, so there's natural light coming in, but there's still no power. But she was able to, to figure out what was going on with him through finding an old medical tricorder. And she's like, oh, it looks like you're fine, except I discovered some weird stuff in your head, but maybe the tricorder's broken. And Picard's like, uh, hmm, I know what it is, because remember in episode one when a doctor dropped by and was like, hey, you're going to die no matter what you're going to do, you're going to die at an Arcadia Ego? And uh, Picard was like, okay, well, I better get out into space. Uh, Parenthetical statement, Picard's version of Arcadia. And so Picard's like, uh, no, I think the tricorder's all right. And then uh, we, we have what I can only call a an Allison Pill cry take, where she just looks normal and she's cry, and then she goes back to normal. It's very impressive. I wish I, I, every time I watch it, I try to do it. I'm like normal face, <laughs> bursting apart with crying and back to normal face. It's, that's hard. That's the tongue twister of emotions. I just wonder if she has IBS. She doesn't have to you think that's what it was. Uh, and they were like, oh, yeah, we got to use it. It's perfect. And she's just like, oh, just this acid reflux. So anyway, Picard goes to the main <laughs> bridge and the crew's all like, hey, JL, what's going on, man? How you doing? You feeling OK? And he's like, hey, what we're going to do is we're going to take Soji to her people. We're going to tell them that some Ramoons are attacking. We're going to try to, uh, to contact Starfleet and turn this whole thing around. And yeah, there's Borg implants in my head and they're eating my brain and I'm probably going to die. But that's the last we're going to talk about it. And I don't want to hear anything about being a dying old man. And then he's like, give me a status update. And Rios is like, uh, the ship's structurally attacked, but I got to figure out what's going on with the power. Rafi's like, we landed on an M-class planet. We were disabled by the space flowers, but she has detected a settlement. And Soji identifies the settlement on Capellius as Capellius Station. She believe, And it's like a couple of kilometers away from where they crashed. And she suspects it's the place that she was created, but she's not really sure because her memories are jumbled. Anyway, um, they're, I guess they're sort of like curious as to whether the people or androids or synthetics at Capellia Station will be cool with them. And so she's like, well, you like data. And he was really open minded and sweet. So they're probably like that if they're like me. And everyone's like, okay, well, then we should probably go. And so Picard's like, I think it's time we take a walk. And, um, so they think they're ahead of the Romulans because they took the crazy space conduit. And so Rafi's like, we got a head start, but it could be like within a day or two, we could be, so, you know, Romulans could show up to do their thing here. And so they all go out. 
Rafi gives Soji a phaser and says, hey, watch out, watch your back, just in case of uh, crazy aliens or Narek. It's a great quote that I chose for quotable moments in that. As they leave, they find the crashed artifact is not far from them. And even though time is of the essence, Picard wants to go and see if their friends are still alive. So they go over there to see if Hugh and Elnor have survived. Rafi does point out that Capelli Station is in the other direction. I think she calls it Synthville. <laughs> uh, she says Synthville is in the other direction. Jurati's like, why don't we split up? And then it's actually Soji who's like, I think we should all stick together. Um, so they go into the cube. They see some XBs that are there. One of them refers to Picard as Locutus. He freaks out. But then Elnor shows up and he's like, hey, Picard. And he hugs him. And Picard's like, say you're what? Alive. You're alive. And then uh, a bunch of like dead Romulans get kicked down onto the ground from up above. And who should show up on the scene but get that cue ready? Seven of nine. Do, 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 do. She's seven of nine. <laughs> Oh, boy. That never gets old. It really should, but it won't. It um, doesn't. Yeah, so Seven or Nine is just like, hey, what's up? You guys here to help clean? Are you just happy to see me or whatever? Something badass as <laughs> she shows up. It was so badass. She just kicks Romulans down the stairs and goes, all right, Picard. How what's, you doing? what's up? What's up? What's up? I'm here to save you guys. We saw a snakehead following you, so we jumped into transwarp conduit and decided to save you guys. What's up? Uh, I connected with the queen cell, so I'm going to get these things going back in order. Maybe get some some uh, replicators online. And then Picard's like, well, if you guys are going to get the replicators online, maybe you could get long-range sensors online. And we could figure out what's going on with these Romulans. And the sensors are activated. And they discover that they're facing a fleet of 218 Romulan warbirds. Just 218 Romulan warbirds. I didn't write down the quote, but someone says like 218, that's not so much. And someone else says something like, yeah, it's just the first 100. 109. First 109 you got to watch out for. But doom, yeah. doom, psh. Uh, that wasn't as funny as my Zippo joke, okay? Uh, that's why I did my own room chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, so Picard has to explain his illness to Elnor, who is like a child. He is so innocent, even though he's a machine of death. Uh and it makes Elnor sad, and then Elnor's like, <laughs> but Picard's like, you should stay here with the XBs, they need your help more than I do. And Elnor says, as they say goodbye, that he may never see Picard again. And Picard says, well, that's true for any two people who say goodbye. And he tells Elnor that he's proud of him. Seven says, all right, Picard, you take it easy and keep saving the galaxy. And Picard's like, can't do it, that's all on you now, because I'm dying. And then he walks out into a bright light. In, yeah, into a bright sunset thing. Sunrise, it doesn't matter. He walks out. It's the end. You're like, oh, this is the heroic departure to their end. Bubble. So they arrive at Capellia Station and they're walking among the population and they're like since and somewhat normal. But one of them has yellow eyes like Data and recognizes Soji and says, hey, welcome home, Soji. I'm Arcana. And Arcana recognizes Picard and is like, your data's former captain. And she traces the face of Picard and his old stuff. And they're super excited. And then Arcana asks Soji, did you complete the mission? And Soji's like, oh, yeah, I did. But, uh, you know, some bad things happened. And Soji tells him about the Romulans are coming and wants to destroy them all. And Picard is like, so how many more of the, like, a uh, big flying honking or orchid uh, 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 killer things you have. And Arcana's like, uh, I think we have 10 left, which is not enough to take out 219 Romulan warbirds. Uh, but that's all swept aside as a man makes his way uh, through all the people. And uh, it looks exactly like, well, it looks like, my first thought was Noonien Sung is still alive, but no, it's not Noonien Sung. It is, hold on, I consult my notes because his name is orc, ridiculous. Pla, orc, uncle, uncle, not something soon. Not I'm uncle. I, I like that. Uncle, not something soon. Uh, Alten Inigo Soon. Close. Alten Inigo Soon. Inigo. Inigo. Yeah, I, my name is Inigo Montoya. 
Prepare to die. Prepare to be turned into a, a synthetic life form. He is the son of Nunyan Singh. Uh, and apparently, Nunyan, did I say Singh? Nunyan Singh. Sung. Uh, he and Bruce Maddox built this paradise mm. for mm. their <laughs> for their synthetics people to live. A little paradise, a little community. And uh, basically, Soji tells her story to Alton. And she's like sad about what happened and everything. And that she couldn't keep it a secret. And Alton's like, you couldn't have kept a secret that you didn't know was a secret. And that that's part of Bruce Maddox became really paranoid because of the ban. And um, they didn't want unwanted attention. And then Picard is uh, approached by a droid that looks almost exactly like Soji and Dodge, except her skin is like super, gold, like a different, not quite human it's like gold and her eyes are yellow like data's and her hair is long and pulled back and she's seems somehow taller and she's wearing like a pink dress. I want to say like a pink with like cutouts in the abs, I don't know. peachy with ab cutouts. Anyway, she's like hot robot Dodge mm. Soji, you know, uh, and she's like, uh, I just got completely lost. Just just describing hot robot Dodge Soji. Right. It, that's right. Rio sees her and says, like, oh, that's Jana. And and he's like, the one that I met on the Ibn Masjid. And then uh, Alton is like, oh, no, 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 that's not Jana. That's Sutra. That's Jana's sister. Right. And then they talk and eventually they find out about this admonition business. And Gerardi's like, yeah, I saw the admonition. And Sutra's like, oh, I'd be curious to find out about the admonition. It seems to just drive humans crazy. And Picard's like, maybe it wasn't meant for human minds. Maybe it was meant for synthetic minds. And and Sutra's like, oh, how curious. Well, I'm very learned in all things uh, Vulcan. I can even do a mind meld. Perhaps I could mind meld with you, Gerardi, and relive this experience, this traumatic experience. And Everyone's like, I don't think you should do that. And then Gerardi T is like, eh, it's cool. I'll do it. I'm scared, but I'll do it because I think this is something that they need to see. And so Sutra does a mind meld with Gerardi and she sees something completely different than what we've seen heretofore in their crazy experiences. Uh, I didn't write down the whole long thing, but basically she sees the evolution of like human uh, living things and how they want to be organic life. grow and organic life that's what it says and uh they want to be perfect and they create synthetics but then they are afraid of synthetics so they kill synthetics uh and and in so doing they kill themselves and then there's this whole thing about beyond the boundaries of time and space we stand an alliance of synthetic life watching you waiting for your signal call us and we will come you will have our protection your evolution will be there extinction and then they come out of the mind meld and i'm flipping back but basically sutra's like cool oh she says fascinating mm, um that was a fun mm, moment mm, yes yeah. fascinating mm, fascinating i will kill you all which was somewhat sort of vulcan slash data very vulcan slash data slash i will use this to my advantage <laughs> 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 So, in the meantime, Gerardi and, and uh, Alton Inigo Sung go into the lab. And My name is Inigo Montoya. Pretty ready to oh, die. You're going to do that every time. I'm going to do it every time. That's fine. And then Gerardi sees other stuff that they've been making. There's a butterfly that's completely synthetic. And she talks about Maddox. And then uh, I think this is where... Uh, Sung basically is like, oh, what shame on you, Gerardi. You, you killed a thing that was so beautiful you should pay it back somehow and then he's like oh check out this golem i've made it's like not doesn't have a brain in it but maybe you could help me out with some of the substrate stuff because you can then put like a mind inside of it that could live on forever like a synthetic whatever if you have feel like you want to do that because he's coming with this mind transfer process meanwhile sutra uh tall peach dress soji and normal soji are talking about how they're going to deal with the Romulan threat. And Soji's like, I think Rios can repair La Serena and we can all get away to safety. But Sutra's like, that is uh, just not the way to do it. The Romulans think that we're awful abominations and we should we should do my plan, which is to do this other thing. And then Soji's like, I don't know the potential cost of lives. There's got to be a better way. And then... Uh, 
Narek is brought in. Uh, he's all injured and struggling. Uh, so Rios, meanwhile, goes to Jurati and he's like, hey, I'm going to go back to the ship and try to fix it. And Jurati's like, I think I'm going to stay here for a while and help them finish some of Maddox's work. And Rios is like, I don't really trust these folks, but you can do whatever you want. And Jurati's like, hey, just don't forget me when it's time to go. And Rios is like, hey, baby. Ah, uh, yeah. You're many things, but not forgettable. Or forgettable is not one of them. And then he's, and then he's you know, puts his, puts his hand on her hair and they have a moment looking deep into each other's yeah. eyes. He's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Bounce chicka wow wow. Yeah, real bounce chicka wow wow moment. I think <laughs> they found Arcadia in each other. Am I right? Boom! Oh! Bow, 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 bow. Uh, I'm disgusted with myself. Speaking of disgust, anyway, Rafi gives a tool. Rafi gets a tool to repair La Serena. Arcana's like, hey, use your imagination. I think you'll be able to figure it out. And then Rafi and Picard have a moment because Rafi's so moved by gratitude for some reason. And she's like, you know, Picard, I just wanted to thank you. And you know what? I love you. And Picard's like, oh, but, but, but what? And she's like, you don't say it back to me. And he's like, I, what? And she's like, unless you want to. And he's like, oh, okay. And she's like, okay. And then he's like, you know what, Rafi? I love you too, girl. And then he walks off into the sunset again. Do, 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 do. Eh. He has a wee moment because Rios goes up to him and says something. And then he's like, no. Nope, That's what I mean. He's like, not now. now. I'm in the middle of feeling things. I'm feeling my feelings. I'm feeling my feelings. We will not speak. And Rafi's like stunned. And then uh, Rafi and Rios go to repair the ship. Uh, Narek is in his cell and he's being guarded by uh, one of the synths, not Arcana. Saga. Arcana? Is it not Arcana? I think Arcana is later. Oh. I don't know. This is written poorly. No, no, no. <laughs> I know that there's a saga in there somewhere, but let's say either saga or Arcana. I feel like and feel free to correct saga, me boom. on the internet. Oh. oh. Uh, and he's like, hey, can I get some water? Is this how you treat your prisoners? And uh, whoever is watching him is like, I don't know. We've never had prisoners before. How do Romulans treat their prisoners? And he's like, uh, never mind. Um, can I have some water? And then just as they're about to deactivate the force field, Soji's like, whoa, 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 stop. You can't trust this guy. He tried to kill me. And they're like, oh, no, no, it's cool. I think we're good. Like, I mean, like, uh, I'm watching his vitals and stuff, and he can't get the upper hand on me. I'm a synth. And she's like, you don't know what he is. And then they have a thing back and forth, and he says, I love you. And she's like, I think you do think you love me, but you're a sad and twisted thing. And you disgust me, but not as much as I disgust myself. And then Narek is like, uh, she disgusts herself because she pitied him. And then he's like, uh, talking about pity. Well, I pity you because the Romulans are going to come and they're going to blow you all out of the sky. Uh, um, and uh, Soji's like, they ain't going to do that. And and then uh, Arcana, it does seem like it's Arcana in my head. It looks like Arcana unless there's the other twin synth. Twins. Hey, man, <laughs> I'm living in dreams. And then they said, we'll bring you some food and some water and we'll treat your head injury. Meanwhile, Picard is trying to contact Starfleet on an ultra secure signal, but it's not working. And Soji shows up and she's all confused. She's like, I don't know why this thing with Maddox and Jurati, like why did Jurati kill Maddox? And she's like, I don't understand this quote logic of sacrifice. And, and Picard's like, uh, I don't know, what are you talking about? And she's like, I don't know. I just don't get it. And, and they discuss whether or not Jurati did the right thing or was forced to do the only thing she thought she could do and what's right and what's good and whether killing is right and what sacrifice is about. And there's a lot of discussions, something about a knife. And then, so is trying to figure out is the killing is it is is fear is killing out of fear the opposite of logic or is killing something you have to do to survive if it's the only way to survive and that is her crux her crucible at that mm -hmm. moment in the episode meanwhile uh actually while they're talking we're getting flashes of like um sutra and she's showing up and she's like walking in through the force field to talk to Narek and she's touched his face and everything. And then at one point she says like, I was afraid I was going to kill you before I could use you. And he's like, what? And she's like, but look, I didn't do nothing. You want to get out of here? Oh, she says like, it can wait. 
you want to get out of here because uh, I need your services. And then uh, Picard and Soji find hear someone screaming and they run over and they find Soong uh, mourning over yes. uh, Arcana, I'm going to say. But I don't know. Saga or Arcana? Yeah. What's your question? I thought the Wait, same thing, I, I bet. I have a question. I have a question. Narek's face was healed. So when Soji was chatting to him, he had, you know, his... He had a scar. A, he had a scar on his face. His he had cut. blood. Yeah. There was a cut, yeah. And then when Sutra goes to speak to him, no cut, all gone. And she right. even touches it. And then it's gone. It's gone. And I'm like, how? Well, because they said they were going to bring him food and water and stuff for his injury. So they gave well, him... Oh, yeah, but I just figured they hadn't done it yet. Well, they're, they're since. They're quick. Come on. They're okay. fast. Okay, There's okay. like 4 billion of them. Well, you know, 30 or 40 of them or whatever. Uh, there. I think they got down there and they brought in some food and water, healed up his face. He moved to the other side of the cell. Sutra shows up. She's like, hey, big boy, you want to get out of here? Or do you want to die right now? And he's like, I guess I'll go. Because as they show up, Alton is crying over uh, Arcana, pierced through the eye with the, the thing that she wore. And she he's all like, oh, my per- your beautiful, perfect golden eye. What have they done to your perfect golden eye? Like a real maniac. And Narek is running across the planet to get to the artifact. So then they, everyone gathers in the, in Capellius, Capelli, Capate, Copernicus, 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 Capellius, everyone gathers in Capellius Station Square. Excuse me. And then Sutra is like, all right, here's the real deal. We don't have time for this business. And... And so they all gather, and this is this is getting towards the end of the episode. So you're like, uh, how are you going to get out of this one, J.L.? And basically, Sutra's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to, the message that was the admonition was actually a warning to us. It's for, no, she says, it was a warning for you, but for us, it was a promise, she says. That's so that we can call out to people. There was a, 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 a subspace frequency encoded in the message, which I now have, that will allow us to call out to a higher race of synthetics, and those synthetics will come at our beck and call and save us, and and, and uh, Soong is on board for this whole thing, and so he's like, yes, they all, they, they seek out intelligent life, and, and, and they'll help us, and, and, uh, and I'm trying to remember all the synths' names. And Sutra is like, yes, they help us and they, quote, excise us from organic life that would threaten us. And Picard's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean by excise? And she's like, you know what I mean by excise. And he's like, but, 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 but. And then they're like, uh, Picard's like, no, that's ridiculous. And he does one of his Picard things. He's like, listen to me, everyone, everyone. After the the attack on Mars, this other stuff happened, and you must go with me. Get in the ship, and we'll fly out of here, and then I will take up your case with the Federation. We will reverse this ban. I will be in charge of your safety. You can trust me. I will advocate for you. I will advocate for you. Everyone's kind of like, Gah? Uh, and at first you're kind of like, oh, snap, maybe this uh, maybe this episode is going to end with Picard convincing everyone once again, his last moment before this Aristea of, of speech before death will be to convince these synths and Sung and even Sutra that they should go along with Picard because he knew Data so well. Maybe they will see, they will empathize, they will have that, that, patho- that pathos in his speech making. But then Sung steps up and he's like, wow, wow, wowie, wowie, wow. You give them that crazy, crazy speech, man. They're not even, they're just gobsmacked because you got that face with the lines in it and the gravitas and the speak and everything. And he's like, listen up, kids. They didn't listen to Picard after the attack on Mars and they're not going to listen to him now. And we're going to be screwed if we listen to this guy. So you got to go with Sutra's plan. And guess who agrees to Sutra's plan? Soji as well. She's sitting there. She's like nodding, becoming radicalized. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole time. Picard's like, so you'll do this. You'll be, you will truly become destroyers. And they're like, yeah. And we're going to arrest you because we can't have you walking around because you cause us to have a crisis of, of faith. You're too convincing and compelling and human, and we can't deal with it, so we're going to lock you up. And then they're like, you know who else we're going to lock up? Gerardi. We don't like her either. But then Gerardi's like, but, 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 I've lived my whole life trying to find you, and uh, you're the pinnacle of, of all the research that I did with Bruce. And and uh, she a- appeals to Sung, and she's like, please, let me help you. And Sung's like, yeah, well, she's been kind of a really great help to me, and she could help me. You guys put my brain in that 
Golem's body so I don't also get killed by these higher synthetic lives. And then he's like, you know, Jurati's like the closest thing you all have to a mother. And then Sutra's like, a mother should want to die for her children. Will you die for your children? And she's like, I'll know if you're lying. And Jurati's like, no, it's the truth. I would do it. I would die for you. I want to, ch- I want to, I want to sacrifice this whole sacrifice thing that Picard and Soji were talking about earlier. She says she wants to do it. And, and then, uh, Sutra says, good. And then Picard says, oh, Agnes and shakes his head and is taken away. Uh, Soji says, you, we're not going to be your redemption, Picard. Meh. Remember what Riker said just one episode ago. This teenager, you can do, you never know what they're going to do. It's a whole different thing. It's not a starship, baby. I don't want to clean my room. I don't want to clean my room. Anyway, they leave Picard away. Final shot of this episode. We're in uh, a warp, and we're seeing the Romulan fleet. Are they in the trans warp thing, or are they just normal warping? I couldn't tell. I didn't look super hard, just because it looked kind of like the trans warp conduit. But I don't think it is. It did. Because it shouldn't... But they were going to sp- take 24 hours to get there, and they and Picard managed to do it in, tw- in 15 minutes. Well, that's what I mean. So they must not have been in the transwarp conduit. They were just... No. Some sort of regular Just regular super thing. fast warp. Just full speed warp. And guess who's at the... It's Commodore O. And they're informed on long-range sensors that there's minimal defenses, and the fleet will make it there in 24 hours. <sighs> End scene. Fade to black. Tune in next week for the thrilling conclusion to Et in Arcadia Ego on Paramount Plus and Set Phases, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. This is why we need to do a radio show. This is why we need to do a radio show. Like a radio mystery. Tune in next week. What will Picard do? How will he stop Sutra from attacking all organic life in the galaxy? Tune in next week. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the end of that episode, and we have one episode left in this season one of Star Trek Picard, the, the thrilling conclusion of this mm. ten-episode arc. I wonder what all will happen. All we have to go on is the title, Et in Arcadia Ego, Part 2. So, uh, quotable moments, anybody? Quotable moments. Quotable moments. Quotable moments. Quotable. Uh, what did you have? I'm sure you had a good few. I have a bajillion of them. Uh, we did the synthesizer thing. Um, we did the, oh, Picard yelling at, not yelling, but he's talking to the crew and he's like, I'm going to die soon. And he says, anyone who treats me like a dying man will run the risk of pissing me off. That was my favorite. That was my quote. That was your, I'm sorry. I should have asked you what your quote was first. <laughs> That's <was> right. <laughs> now I don't have Shoot. That. Uh, okay. Well, obviously there's the Picard and Seven of Nine exchange where Seven mm-hmm. says, keep saving the galaxy, Picard. And Picard's like, that's all on you now. I liked a thing that uh, Sung said. Picard's like, oh, you look exactly like Data. And he's like, yeah, I look like Data if he got gotten old and soft and stuff. And then he says, my father had me, but he created Data, a fact he never let me forget. And finally, perhaps my favorite. Is that my favorite? Um, yeah, I think so. I just, you know what I'm realizing in this rewatch? Rafi says a lot of great stuff. She's very quotable. And she might be my favorite character to watch in this rewatch. Her and Rafi and Rios. Not uh, EMH Rios, but Rios himself. I'm enjoying their stuff. Uh, mm. But when she, when they're about to leave the ship to walk out on the planet, she gives a uh, weapon to Soji. And she says, mm. <laughs> we might... Yeah, we might run into, I don't know, angly reptiloids out there, homicidal fungi. It's a thing. And then uh, because Soji looks unconvinced, she says, or somebody's asshole Romulan X. Anyway, I thought that was great. <laughs> angry yeah, <that's> reptiloids <laughs> and homicidal fungi. That was perfect. Ooh, those are my quotes for uh, this episode. What did you think of Arcana? Because I got super lore vibes. Wait, Arcana, you got super lore vibes? Or do you mean Sutra? 
So, so sorry. Yes. What did you think of Sutra? Because I got super lore <laughs> vibes from Sutra. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly that. It was like um, it was like Soji was was totally the data character who's like, I know that I was created, mm. but I don't really understand and I'm doing my best to fit in and I want to be human, even though I know I can't be, but I have to learn where the dividing line is and if it matters. And then Sutra's like, I know all the secrets. I've been so close to our father. He told me everything. I can have emotions. I can come up with dastardly plots. Mm. Got the same vibe there. But Soji, who was so distrustful of Picard and everyone around her, suddenly has, you know, found her family and gone, oh, okay, totally, I believe you. Yeah, let's do that. Well, listen, she, this is, she's been on completely unsolid ground for the last three episodes. She, like, was in a fugue state when she had a memory and then was immediately tried, her boyfriend tried to kill her. And then she met some old guy who was like, come on my ship. And then they jumped through a, a thing of energy into a planet. They met a girl who gave her a compass and told her that she was great. And then Picard insulted her. And then they jumped on a thing and she found out that there was murders happening. But I mean, she's been all over the place. And now she's finally found where she truly came from in her family. And she's like, these are the people I want to defend, you know. Mm. But also her thinking is not complete yet. So... You know, this is a, she's ripe. She, this is a great allegory for like, uh, I'm gonna get up on my soapbox, but, uh, this is a great allegory for essentially what it's like, how you can find people and radicalize them when their thinking is in flux, when they're in a state of panic or disassociation and they're not quite sure what's up, what's down, where do they belong? All they know is that they're being persecuted from side to side. And you say, no, welcome, welcome mm. home. Uh, everything that you've done that you felt bad about is not really your fault. It's just part of what happens. And and the, the greater enemy has been turning you against yourself. And we're here to empower you. And all you have to do is 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 be part of us. And we will support you and uh, if you sacrifice yourself for us, we'll sacrifice ourselves for you. This is your place. And that's kind of what's happening here. You know, it sounds like any documentary on any cult I've ever seen. Yes. Like when you put totally. it that way. Yeah. You're indoctrinated. I mean, mm. yeah. Find someone who's like completely feeling out of place and worried and unsure and, and, uh, and be like, no, no, no. We're just like you. You need to come with us. And they're like, great. This is wonderful. Like, Everyone here is so confident and beautiful and knows what they're talking about. And they're all friendly and they know everything that I have been wanting to know for so long. They know about my past and my parents, <laughs> you know. Belonging. Oh, hashtag belonging. belonging. <laughs> Don't do that. You hurt your, you hurt your voice last time. I time. know. I already did it. <laughs> It's clearly a thing my, I can do <clears throat> well and not have my vo voice. <clears throat> vocal cords don't want to move <clears throat> in reverse. Mm. Ah! Yeah, so I think this is a nice allegory for, it's not nice, but it's an al it's a good, it's an effective allegory. It is an effective allegory for uh, the manipulation of people, bringing them under your wing and forcing them to do what you'd like them to do by being charismatic and welcoming and essentially a sociopath. You want to play a 60-year-old literature professor in real life. Yeah. Play? Yeah. I want to be. Oh, I want to, yeah. be, I want to be, but I only want to teach science fiction novels. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thing. I'm sure. Yeah, but I don't think you could. I mean, maybe at some very crunchy university, they'd be like, ah, this musician who's only got a bachelor's degree in music composition, but has a love for science fiction is going to teach a class about science fiction writing. Or novels. Hey, I subscribed to Masterclass and somebody has just come out with a science, a, you know, a, a guide to writing science fiction. Yeah, but that's N.K. Jemison. I saw it because, of course, I, I've been targeted by those ads as well. <laughs> and uh, she's a great writer. I, I would be like, I play music, but I like to talk about science fiction. You've written science fiction. Oh, sh a little uh, short, stories short stories here and there. Nothing and, serious. And science fiction love operas. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I guess you could call that. Uh, I have not been published. It, the point is, yes, that is my dream. That's my dream job. <laughs> Sorry. It's either it's yeah. that and I'd also like to host an NPR show and I'd also like to do a podcast about Star Trek. So 33% of the way there. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're winning. I think you're winning at life. Yeah. Okay. Let's get out of here. <laughs> let's do it. Next time. 
on Set Phasers. Next time on Set Phasers, the thrilling conclusion of season one of Star Trek Picard at In Arcadia Ego Part 2. And we'll find out if Picard stays locked up, if the Romulans attack, if Soji changes her mind, if Rios and Jurati fall in love, what happens with Seven of Nine, what happens with Elnor. So many threads to wrap up, and we'll find out next week. Tune in next time to Set Phasers. Uh, you can, of course, follow us on Set Phasers Podcast on Instagram, and that said, well, also on the Facebook too. I post memes. We have some things. I shared a picture of Meme Game Strong. Yeah, Meme Game Strong. I shared a picture of Aki's new Star Trek socks this week. They were a gift from someone. Someone. someone from who someone. Knows you so well. Someone who knows me very well sent me a package of Star Trek socks. I'm wearing a second pair today. Are you really? Yes. What are you wearing today? I'm wearing the Spock ones. Spock. Of course. Live it's Friday. Spock. 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 And I have the other ones around here too, but we're not live streaming we're anymore, not, so we're I not can't on show video anymore. My socks. Never mind. We'll just we'll just have to post your Monday through Friday socks uh, as well. Oh, memes. great idea. Mm, tastes great good. Great idea. Meme game strong. I have now forgotten uh, my outro. I think you it's are, you now. You, you need to say something about me. following us yes. somewhere else. Yes, listen, if you want to support our continuing mission to discover <laughs> what Star Trek has in Star Trek, <laughs> what am I, 9,000 years old? Star Star fuck it. Star Trek. Star Trek skepticals. Specific <laughs> Star Trek. If you want to support us in our continuing mission to discover what Star Trek has in store for us, we'd only be delighted. You can patronize us, we can take it, by going to patreon.com slash set phasers. Mm. Well, until next time, I'm Stevie Manns. And I'm Aki Burmese. And this has been Set Phasers, a very highly illogical Star Trek podcast. <laughs> that sounds so grammatically incorrect. It is. Computer. <laughs> End program. Hey.